I'd like to start with your comments on the military operation, the Turkish military operation that's happening in Afrin at the moment. We are deeply concerned and we do hope that this military operation would stop as soon as possible because the fighting and wars are not the solution to the problem. Do you see a role for Peshmerga fighters uh, in this fight, in this battle? Would you send Peshmerga fighters to support the YPJ? Sending Peshmerga will not solve the issue there. The best assistance we can offer is trying our best to stop the offensive. Kurdistan has been described as a success story after 2003. The Kurds were able to thrive in every aspect of life and they've lost that now. Do you think that you took a risk and you lost? I said it before and I will say it again. I don't regret it. I don't regret the vote of three million people. And the referendum has been successful. It was 93 of the people who voted yes for the referendum. You, you say it's been successful, but in reality it hasn't because the Kurdish people have suffered after the referendum and you, you didn't do what you wanted. You didn't, you didn't gain independence. What is happening now is the result of Baghdad cutting the budget of the Kurdistan people in 2014. Also, the fight against IS and the dramatic cut in the oil prices has cost us a lot. Remember, we also have around 2 million IDPs and refugees. That's what caused the current situation and not the referendum. So why should we call it a failure? You uh, were advised by the United States of America and uh, the international community that this wasn't the right time uh, to hold the referendum. I'm just wondering, looking back a few months later, do you think that you should have listened to the advice of the United States? First of all, the referendum is not a crime. A nation just explains their wishes and decisions about the future in a peaceful and democratic way. Those who have said it was not a good time for the referendum, they never had alternative dates or a timing to hold the referendum and they haven't offered us a suitable alternative. The referendum is not a crime, it's a democratic expression of the people. But as a result, you've lost Kirkuk and other territories that you were in control of. I'm just wondering, looking back at what happened, do you think it was a mistake? I don't regard it as a mistake and I don't regret holding the referendum. What happened in Kirkuk was the result of a betrayal of a group within the Kurds themselves. We've been saying even before the referendum that Kirkuk should remain an example of coexistence. You talk about betrayal within the Kurds themselves, and this is really indicative of how divided the Kurds are within themselves. We've spoken to people, not just in Kirkuk, but in Erbil. They say they've been suffering after what happened in Kirkuk. Uh, they've been suffering security-wise. They've been suffering economically. They blame Baghdad, but they also blame the Kurdish leadership, the Kurdish politicians, because they say the divisions are the reason why this happened. Even before the referendum, there were talks about the Kurdish divisions, but the reality is that 93% of the people of Kurdistan voted yes for the referendum. There was massive participation. Those who complained about the referendum were also complaining before. If they want to have liberty and freedom, there will definitely be sacrifices. And the Kurdish people have been sacrificing. Our view is that the referendum was not against the Iraqi constitution and had it not been for the betrayal of a group within Kurdistan, the people wouldn't have suffered the way they have. What happened is just temporary. We have a belief that our people will pass this situation quickly. So you do, you do admit that what happened in Kirkuk, partly if not mostly, is due to divisions within the Kurdish leadership itself. The referendum was not a personal decision. It was not 
the decision of one party or a group of parties. It was the decision of all the parties and the parliament. It was the decision of the Kurdish people. Some parties had a different opinion on the timing, but they weren't against the referendum. 93% of the will of the people is proof. What happened in Kirkuk was not the result of the division. It was the result of a betrayal of a certain Kurdish group. Who betrayed you? The people of Kurdistan know, and the international community knows. Some would say that the referendum wasn't about Kurdish nationalism at all. It was mainly about political power and maintaining control uh, on the oil resources. 93% of Kurdistan's people voted yes, and that's the most important thing. How others choose to explain, it's of no value to us. What about the fate of Kirkuk? The Peshmerga forces were in charge, took charge uh, of Kirkuk and protected the oil, uh, the oil reserves for more than three years now since the uh, so-called Islamic State took control. They've now lost control, and many people in Kirkuk are asking is that how it's going to be now? Are the Iraqi forces now in charge of Kirkuk? Will they stay in charge of Kirkuk? There are negotiations and talks going on now. Kirkuk and other Kurdish areas are now occupied. This must be resolved according to the Iraqi constitution. So are you saying that Kirkuk is occupied? Yes. How close are you then to this agreement of a joint administration in Kirkuk? Talks are continuing, and we hope that we can reach a mutual solution for the situation in that area. But the continuation of imposing the current status is unacceptable. If the talks fail, what are you going to do? We do hope they are going to be successful. If not, we will decide on the time based on the situation. Do you expect fighting to, to restart in Kirkuk? Because that's what one big concern for people. We are not thinking about fighting. We are working very hard on reaching a mutual agreed solution for the areas. We held the referendum to avoid war. It was a peaceful way for the people to have a chance to express their opinion on the future. Do you think that this is the end for the hopes of the Kurdish people uh, in their own independent state? Or are you going to try again? And not just in Iraq, but your opinion generally about Kurds in, in the region. Uh, but then, uh, we have a just cause, and we will never, ever give up on it. Are you not concerned that this tension in Kirkuk and in other northern areas in Iraq is going to give space to remaining militants of the so-called Islamic State? There is a fact that is really clear. Had it not been for the support of the Peshmerga to the Iraqi forces, Mosul would not have been liberated. What happened in Kirkuk and other areas after the referendum absolutely gave IS a chance to get back to some of their activities, not just in Kirkuk, but in other areas. IS isn't over. IS is regrouping and reorganizing themselves, and they have done operations in some areas. So you believe that ISIS hasn't been completely defeated. What are you going to do about this? For us, fighting terrorism is top priority, whether it's IS or a group by any other name. And under no circumstances, we will allow IS to resurrect in the areas we control. But fighting IS is not just a military effort. It's a political and social fight as well. You announced that you're stepping down, that you're not going for another term in the presidency. Uh, when are the elections going to happen, the presidential elections? And I'm wondering if you have someone in mind that you think might have a good chance at the presidency. Uh, I respect the law. According to the law, my term is over. That's why I didn't extend it. Any citizen, given they fulfill the legal requirement, can run for president. We are in talks about the time. And what will you do next? Once a Peshmerga, always a Peshmerga? I've been Peshmerga and will continue to be Peshmerga.